Okay, here we are, third day after the fires started. So yesterday we got our power back, electricity came back on, and then yesterday afternoon the internet service was restored, and then last night phone service was restored. That's, that's good. But the uh, toll just keeps rising and rising, more homes lost, a larger death toll between Napa and Sonoma counties and we're just not out of the woods. The, the fires have barely been contained. There's hardly any containment. Uh, I heard that um, the fire crews aren't even focusing on saving structures. They're just fighting the fires, although we're not really seeing any air tankers, hearing, you know, hardly any helicopters, just not seeing much. A lot of people are noticing that. Um, <clears throat> crews are stretched thin, so that's understandable. Uh, but the fires just keep raging, they keep spreading. More and more acres are burning around us. The, the smoke is, uh, it's a little better now than it was this morning. This morning was pretty horrific. And I'm starting to feel like I have a cold. A lot of irritation in my throat and nose. I just came outside briefly to film this vlog, but I've been staying inside wearing the Sen95 respirator and having the um, air purifier going. Now our town is being threatened by the fire. So we're now on alert to possibly evacuate out of here. We, we helped save my, my grandma's house and the property, the ranch that that's on was saved. Uh, so that's not going to burn again. So that's, they're out of the woods now, but now we're not out of the woods. We were safe initially, and now we're not. So we packed up our car. We're ready to get the heck out of here if we need to at the last minute. A lot of other neighbors have actually already left, but we're going to hold out as long as we can, and then we'll leave if, uh, as soon as there's word of evacuating this, uh, where we are now, and there's still ash just falling through the air. All right, today is day four after the fires. Today's a much better day. They uh, were finally able to bring in a ton of air support that they couldn't do before. There were a lot of questions about why there were no air tankers, why there were no helicopters, or anybody fighting these fires from the air the first couple days. Uh, people were upset by it and wondering why and we finally got some more answers today and that is because the smoke was so thick that they could just couldn't fly you can't fly when you can't see for this sort of piloting you have to be able to see especially when you're flying that close to terrain and mountains so it was just too smoky today the layer of smoke is a lot more is a lot shallower it's still hugging close to the ground. The air quality is still bad. That's why I'm still having to... We're all wearing masks. And they are finally getting some containment on these, on these fires. Our town is no longer really all that threatened right now. So that's good. So there's the, the threat level has gone way down. The town of Calistoga has still been evacuated. Fire has still not swept through there. So that's good too. We've got crews from other states that came in today and even from Canada and Australia. So we're really fighting this thing big time today. The mood is a lot better. I still see ash falling from the sky a little bit. Okay, here's how the scene looks now. You can see the uh, smoke plumes over the mountains. So day six, the fires have actually crept a little closer to us. However, the wind is blowing the fires the other way, away from us. So that's good. And we have an enormous fire crew fighting the fire now, so even though the fires have gotten a lot closer, we're feeling uh, actually a little safer. So that's good. So that's that. The air is really clean today, as you can see. Uh, there's hardly any smoke in the air around us or above us because of the wind direction blowing all that smoke away. The only bad thing about that is maybe pushing the fire away from us, but it's also pushing those fires toward the other communities on their side of the mountains. So that's not good. Given the extremely large size of the crew fighting uh, this fire over here, uh, 
those communities on the other side may not may not be all that threatened. I don't know. It's just it's just we're in a much better position now to fight the fires. That's the main thing. Today is October 17th. I've kind of lost count of how many days it's been since the fire started. So, I'm just gonna say it's October 17th today. It's also the anniversary of the Loma Prieta earthquake that we had in our area. I don't think there's a whole lot more to update you guys on other than just to show some of the aftermath of these horrific fires. I'm at one of my favorite hiking places here in Napa. Uh, I was really worried about this place. Wondering if it had burned. And it has not. You can see there's dry grass everywhere around here. However, the fire did get awfully close to the park. Air is really smoky, so it's hard to see. But you can see, you know, you can see up here where it did burn. Um, uh, you can see the oak trees. Most of them survived. Oak trees are very resilient. They don't burn too easily. So you can see that it burned awfully close to this park though. You can see the fire breaks that they've carved into the ground up here. And there's, even though the fires are really not posing a threat anymore, they're still carving fire breaks out here. The tractor there. You can see this massive fire break they did right there that kept the fire from burning any closer. It is amazing. We got a couple track uh, bulldozers out there. So good work uh, to everybody. Looks like they're doing another fire break there because there are neighborhoods on that side over there. See, so they have a double fire break. And I'm really surprised the hills over there didn't burn. There has just been untold loss. I don't even know now how many structures were lost. It's like in the thousands. It's probably way more than the 3,500 figure that I qu you know, quoted before. And the lives lost, I've lost count. I don't think it's more than 50. But one life lost is too many. So whether it's one or 50, it's too many. Uh, as far as my town, it's no longer threatened by the fires. The fires that were burning there did burn very close to the city limits today, but they have numerous fire breaks protecting us, and they're kind of, they're kind of considered controlled burns at this point, close to my city. So we're not really worried about it, even though the fire is burning right up to our back door uh, of our of our town. We're being told not to worry. So I felt that I could leave the house today, take a trip down the valley, and check things out down here. Uh, we were staying close to home all this time, just in case we needed to evacuate at the last minute. Because if you're far from home, and you they order everybody out, and then you go back home, try to go back home, you get turned around. Denied entry. We don't want that to happen, so I didn't want to take a chance, so I just stood home all that time. And today it was safe enough that we could do that. But the air quality up, up at home is absolutely terrible. It's probably going to be that way for a while. It's a little bit better here in Napa. So there's really not much more to update you guys on, just that these fires that are uh, that are burning now, the active burn spots, are going to burn themselves out eventually. But it could be weeks before these fires are totally out, even months, depending on how much rain we get going into winter. I'm going to show some of the aftermath here. Burned up to r almost, burned almost right up to the uh, trail here. Crazy. Now, well, now that you've seen the devastation that we've had, that's just a, that's just the tip of the iceberg, guys. That's just the little bit that I was able to show. So, in case you haven't seen the first video to this part two that I'm doing right now, check it out. 
that's where we were uh, going to check on the family the night of the fire, and we were right up there with the flames, helping, helping, doing the best that we could to um, protect the property, the house, Grandma's house, which seemed to be the most threatened when we were there. We were putting out hot spots and all that, all that stuff, and uh, it was really scary. It was um, terrifying. Never want to go through that again, ever. Well, yeah, that's all for now, guys. I think I think we're gonna be okay. Thanks for tuning in.